الحمد لله الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له ونشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد ان سيدنا ونبينا وحبيبنا وشفيعنا ومطاعنا محمدا عبده ورسوله اما بعد فقد قال الله تعالى في القران المجيد والفرقان الحميد اعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وكونوا مع الصادقين صدق الله العظيم وقال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم اربع اذا كنا فيك فلا عليك ما فاتك من الدنيا صدق حديث وحفظ امانه وحسن خليقه وعفه في طعم او كما قال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم respected ulama e kiram elders below brothers in islam we are living in an increasingly superficial environment and world outward beauty excellence in appearance this is something that has become the focal point of the existence of many people a glaring testimony of this will be the multi billion dollar cosmetic industry where people are prepared to spend stupendous amounts of money to appear attractive to appear beautiful the mafhum of one riwayat ibn adam allah taala calls out o oh, ibn adam o oh, insan how much effort you are making kam tatazayyanta lin nas how much effort you are making to make yourself beautiful attractive for the people fa hal tazayyanta li ajli have you made effort to make yourself beautiful in the eyes of allah and when we talk of in the eyes of allah by extension in the eyes of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam Tomorrow in Allah's court in Qiyamah in the world people may have looked up to us in the world this may have been a beautiful and an attractive person in Allah's court are we attractive in Allah's court are we beautiful is the testimony of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam in our favor that this is a beautiful person we have to understand my respected brothers every one of us particularly in our current geopolitical context we are a minority in this country in many parts of the world muslims are minority we have an added burden or responsibility one is mashallah we may be practicing muslims five times namazi we may be fasting in the month of ramadan carrying out the obligatory acts of ibadat of deen but coupled with this every one of us is an ambassador for islam every one of us has an added burden and responsibility you want to make yourself attractive become attractive in the eyes of allah and his rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam enhance your beauty and your attractiveness not only superficially externally internally become a beautiful and an attractive human being when allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commands us in the quran that allah has presented in front of us the most beautiful human being they can ever be externally internally from every aspect from every direction he was kamal he was perfection he was the epitome the height of beauty and attraction and when allah places this personality on a pedestal and allah says this is uswa this is your role model keep this in front of you 
This is your goal. This is what you are supposed to aspire towards. Very beautifully in the Quran, Allah says, لَقَدْ كَانَ لَكُمْ فِي رَسُولِ اللَّهِ أُسْوَةٌ حَسَّنًا Allah says, لَقَدْ Definitely, without a doubt, كَانَ لَكُمْ Past tense which creates greater emphasis. Definitely, without a doubt, there is for you فِي رَسُولِ اللَّهِ in Muhammadur Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam uswatun hasana the most interesting the Quran uses the word hasana because Allah knows this desire for beauty that overtakes human being Allah has made it part of our psyche our nature we want to be beautiful Allah says you want to be beautiful the most beautiful example perfect role model is Muhammadur Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam become a beautiful human being by following rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam this is the occasion of jumu'ah time is very limited the shariat quran quran is bahrul la sahil alaw. it's a limitless ocean the ahadith of rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam there is one title that is given to scholars of hadith one of it is called Hafiz a Hadith. Hafiz a Hadith means someone who knows one million Ahadith by heart. A personality who, in the science of Hadith, is able to, from memory, like Imam Abu Zura Rahimahullah used to say, like how you people read Kulu Allah wa Ahad, I can read one million Ahadith by heart. So, such an extensive ocean of knowledge. Occasion of Juma, it's impossible. But the shafaqa, kindness, compassion of our master, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he gave us a nature, an essence. He condensed this entire masla, this entire issue in four things. Very often we find when sahaba would come to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, they would also look for something brief. This is human nature. We don't want to get into a long polluted thing. We're looking for some easy way. Or sometimes a shortcut. Sahaba would ask, Ya Rasulullah, tell us something. La asalu anhu ahadan ba'dak. We find these expressions in riwayat. Ya Rasulullah, tell us something. After this, we don't need to ask you anything more. In other words, tell us something concise. Something we can hold on to. This hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, which I recited in the beginning, I'm going to translate it now. My Nabi says, Arba'un, four things. Arba'un, and if we look at these four things, unfortunately, like I mentioned, occasion of Juma is very brief. Not sure if we will be able to cover these four things also. But very, very briefly, Allah's Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, these four things are such, if one has to look at it, it is almost as if the entire edifice of Islam, Quran and Hadith is built on these four things. And how important these four things are? Arba'un, idha kunna fika, fala alayka ma fataka min dunya Allahu Akbar. How beautifully Rasul Pak sallallahu alayhi wa sallam puts it. You want to become beautiful internally, externally? You want a beautiful life? You want peace, you want muhabbat, you want love, you want affection, you want acceptance, you want to be free from depression, you want to be free from mental stress, mental worries. All this is contained. You want to become beautiful in Allah's court in akhirat. You want your dunya to be made, you want your akhirat to be made. My Nabi says, hold on to four things. Fala alayka ma fataka min dunya If nothing... He says, if you have these four things, you have everything. Your dunya is made, your akhirat is made, you need nothing else. In another hadith, it comes, ma darraka, nothing can harm you, whatever you've lost of the world, you've lost nothing, if you have these four things. Allahu Akbar. What are these four things? The first thing, Allah's Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, sidqu hadithim. Sidqu hadithin. When you speak, speak the truth. Safwan radiallahu ta'ala anhu. One sahabi comes to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Ayakun al-mu'min jabbanan. 
Ya Rasulullah, can a man have iman and be buzdil, be a coward? No culture, no culture promotes cowardliness. Every culture frowns on cowardliness. Yet, Allah's Rasulullah is being asked, can cowardliness and iman come together? My Nabi says, yes, it is possible. Ayakun al mu'min bakhil. Can a man be miserly and have iman? Here yeah also, here yeah also, Islam frowns upon miserliness. A Muslim is a generous person. Yet Rasulullah says it is possible. Third question is asked Ayakun al mu'min kadhaban. Can a man have iman and be a liar? Can a man have iman and be deceitful? Can a man have iman and be dishonest? Here, Muhammad Rasulullah says, La, it is not possible to have Iman and be a liar. Yutba'ul mu'min ala al-khilali kulliha illa al-kathib wal-khiyana. Another hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa He said, a mu'min, my ummati can, can commit, the mafum of the hadith can commit every wrong, every crime. We are insan, we are weak, we'll make mistakes, we'll ask Allah for forgiveness. He said, every sin is possible, but two sins, Iman and these two sins don't come together. He said, Al-Kadhib wal khiyana Al-Kadhib wal khiyana Lying and being what we call Doka Baz, deceiving people. Eating up the haq of people. This does not gel with Iman. The greatest, the greatest ni'mat and bounty of Jannat. The greatest ni'mat and what is jannat? A'adattu li'ibadis salihin. Ma la aynun ra'at, wa la udhunun sami'at, wa la khatar ala qalbi bashar. Allahu Akbar. My Nabi said, Allah says, I have prepared for my slaves, for my bandas that are obedient to me in jannat. Such a jannat, no eye has ever seen anything like it. No ear has ever heard of such things. No mind has ever imagined a place like Jannat. Such a Jannat. فَلَا تَعْلَمُ نَفْسٌ مَا أُخْفِيَ لَهُمْ مِنْ قُرَّةِ أَعْيُنْ جَزَاءً بِمَا كَانُوا يَعْمَلُونَ Allah says, imagine everything that pleases you, that excites you. Everything that is ecstatic to you. Imagine it. You will still not be able to imagine what I have kept in Jannat. No one knows such a Jannat. And yet... Of all the ni'mats, all the bounties of Jannat, there is one bounty. Baqi Jannat ko bula dene wala. This bounty will make you forget the rest of the bounties of Jannat. The hoors, the qusurs, the anhars, the palaces, the streams, the maidens, everything you'll forget. When this one bounty is presented, what is that? The didar of Allah. The didar of Allah, Allahumma rzuqni, lazzatan nadri la wajhik. My Nabi would make dua, O oh Allah, bless me with the lazzat, with the ecstasy of being able to look directly at you. It comes in the riwayat, cutting it short, time is limited. When Allah will gather the people of Jannah, and Ridwan will be commanded, irfa'il hujub. The keeper of Jannah, Ridwan will be told, irfa'il hujub. Remove the veil, remove the veil between Allah and his bandas. And let the Jannatis look directly at Allah. That ni'mat will make every other ni'mat of Jannat pale. When Allah at that time will address the Jannatis, it comes in the riwayat. Allah will say, marhaba, marhaba. Welcome to who? What is highlighted? Marhaban bil musalleen, marhaban bil qanitin, marhaban bil saimin, marhaban bil mutahajjideen. Will Allah say, welcome those who used to make salah, those who used to read tahajjud, those who used to fast, those who made hajj, those who made umrah, those who made jihad. No! What will Allah highlight at the pinnacle of Jannah? Marhaban bil sadiqeen. Marhaban bis sadiqeen. Welcome to those who used to speak the truth. Those who were sadiq. Those who were sadiq. Don't take this lightly. My Nabi said, Ana za'imun. Ana za'imun. Ana za'imun. Bi baytin fi wasatil jannah. Liman taraka al kadhib wa in kana mazihan. He said, I, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, am your guarantor. 
come and demand it from me come on the day of judgment and demand it from me i guarantee you i will give you a home in the center of jannat liman tarak al kadhib if you will give up speaking lies if you will give up speaking lies even in joking even in jesting today we joke and we speak lies we promise things to our children we speak lies as business people we are liars my respected brothers lying instead of becoming the exception today has become the norm shabashi will congratulate a person as to how gifted a liar he is how dishonest he is a muslim allahu akbar forget muslim hiraqal room this riwayat is the third third or fourth hadith in bukhari sharif hiraqal room the leader of the roman empire the caravan of abu sufyan of makkah at that time he had an accepted islam these are the sanadid the ruasa the leaders of the quraish the greatest enemies of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam majority of them eventually will become those who are slaughtered in badr they will die on kufr these are the firauns of the ummah at that time in elia abu hiraqal room comes to know this group of the quraish of makkah is here businessmen he calls them gathers them in front of the leaders of the roman empire that is the superpower of the time first question he asks them he wants to find out about the personality who claims that he is the nabi of allah referring to rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam what does hiraqal room say amongst you who is the closest person related to that person abu sufyan stands up and he says i am the closest relation to muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam calls abu sufyan front places the rest of the delegation of the quraish in the back then he says to his people i am going to question abu sufyan i want you to watch and i want you to ask them behind that every answer he is giving me is he speaking the truth or is he speaking lies then he addresses abu sufyan questions about rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam to determine the authenticity of the nubuwwat of nabi pak sallallahu alaihi wasallam incident is a lengthy one we would have heard it before i'm not going into the details the point You want to be an ambassador of Islam. You want to be a beautiful Muslim. You want Allah and His Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to be happy with you. These are kafirs drowning in kufr. Yet Abu Hiraqal Room. What does Abu Sufyan say when Hiraqal, when the when Hercules, when the leader of the Roman Empire started questioning me about Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? It said it, he says it entered my heart that if there was ever a, an opportunity for me to lie. for me to be smirch the personality of muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam this was it i did not want to promote islam in front of the in front of the in front of the superpower of the time i do not want to, i am not a supporter of muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam this was an opportunity to lie yet kafir kafir drowning in kufr enemy of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam he says allahu akbar he says if it did not embarrass me that the that it would become known that abu sufyan spoke lies i would like kadhab to anhu on that occasion i would have openly spoken lies a kafir could not bear that dishonesty should be attached to his name what about the muslim of today what about the muslim of today and what amongst the questions that hiraqal room ya asked what did he ask فهل تتهمونه بالكذب قبل ان يقول ما قال before he claimed to be a nabi of allah tell me about this person muhammad would he speak the truth or would he lie would he speak the truth or would he lie today all the scandals all the altered documentation the court cases the disputes the scandals the arguments behind it is what where is the honesty of the ummah where is the integrity of this ummah the gullies and the alleys of makkah would resound before nubuwwat what did allah highlight about his nabi the gullies and the alleys of makkah al amin as sadiq al amin as sadiq they would call him by these titles the truthful muhammad the amanatdar muhammad he was not gaddar he would not deceive he would not usurp the rights of others his honesty his integrity hajj rabiul awwal is coming aashiq e rasul banna allahu akbar ihsan danish 
is the name of one very famous poet. He passed away in Lahore, 1982. Originally from India, migrated to Pakistan, passed away in Pakistan. Very, very famous poet. In one of his books, he writes one incident. That time the English were ruling India. In Delhi, there was a pickpocket, Muslim pickpocket. He had his gangsters or he had his chelas. They would go out for the day, young, young people that were recruited to be pickpockets. End of the day, one small pickpocket comes back to the chief. What did you get today? He says, I managed to earn two rupees. Gets upset. You wasted time the whole day. Only two rupees you earn. So he says, you know what, Sardarji? Today, one very big machli came. I caught one big fish. There was an Englishman. I managed to cut his pocket and I procured a huge sum of money. As I was running away, this thought entered my heart that tomorrow on the day of judgment, what will happen if Isa alayhi salam says to my Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam that your ummati stole from my ummati? Will this not embarrass my Nabi on that day? When this thought entered my heart, I took whatever I procured and I went back and I gave it back to that Englishman. Then from someone else I found a small amount. This caused tears to come into the eyes of that thief. And he said, my son, today you have done well. He takes 10 rupees from his own side and gives it to him. What type of ambassadors of Islam are you and I? In Saharanpur in India, this is historically recorded during the English reign. There was a dispute that occurred. There was a piece of land that the Muslims had usurped. They didn't have hak to it. They usurped it. They wanted to build a masjid. The Hindus at that time wanted to build a mandir on that same piece of land. This dispute went to the English court, English judge. It was their reign. Heated argument. Finally, the judge is exasperated. They are lying. The, the, these people are lying. He doesn't know. So then he asked the Hindus, amongst the Muslims, is there anyone whose testimony you people are prepared to accept that he will speak the truth? They said, yes, there is one person. So he asked who? They said, Mufti Muzaffar Hussain, Rahmatullah Ali. Whatever testimony he will give, we as Hindus will accept it. Muslims are very happy. Why? Mufti Saab is not going to say anything against us. We want the land for masjid. So obviously he's going to say it's our land. We're going to build a masjid. If he, if he has to speak anything else, the mandir will be built here. When Mufti Muzaffar Hussain is called to court, the judge asks him that whose land is this? He said, if the truth has to be told, Judge Saab, this land belongs to the Hindus. The Muslims usurped it. Obviously, like today, mashallah, contemporary Muslims, like the Jews we've become, they started cursing and getting very, very upset with Mufti Muzaffar. What kind of a person? You sold out Islam, you're a sellout, you are like this, you are like that. What does Quran say? لا يجرمنكم شنعان قوم Allah تعدلوا Allah says, do not let your association or contact, whether it's your family member, whether it's your brothery, whether it's somebody close to you, do not let this cause you to move away from justice. اعدلوا هو أقرب للتقوى be on justice. My Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Sahaba say, he, he said when he was asked, what is the worst sin? What is the worst sin? What is the worst sin that it is possible for a man to commit? He said, Al-Ishraqu Billah. Al-Ishraqu Billah. It is shirk with Allah. Then what? He said, Uqukul Walidain. It is to tear the heart of your parents open to cause hurt to them. Then they ask what? He said, Shahadat the zur Shahadat the zur Shahadat the du zur to give false testimony, to give false testimony, to give false testimony. This upset Rasulullah so much that he repeated it over and over and over again. Sahaba became concerned in their hearts. They said, we wish he would keep silent. So often he was saying this. So often he was saying this. And yet today, for a couple of rands, you can buy somebody's testimony. There is no integrity. There is no honesty left. Coming back to this incident, when Mufti Muzaffar Hussain said, this land belongs to the Hindus, what did that judge say? This is historically recorded. That judge said, Aaj Musalman Harge. Today the Muslims have suffered a defeat. Lekin Islam jeet gaya, but Islam is victorious. Muslims have suffered a defeat, but Islam is victorious. 
Islam, the pinnacle of Islam is sachai. The pinnacle of Islam is truthfulness. The pinnacle of Islam is honesty. The pinnacle of Islam is integrity. My Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa how beautifully he put it. He said, Taharro as said. Taharro as said. Be honest regardless of what options. At times it will appear. If I'm going to be honest, I'm not going to, I'm going to lose out. Inna fihil halaka. You are going to see destruction, loss for you in being honest. But my Nabi gives you consolation. He says, فَإِنَّ فِيهِ النَّجَاتِ فَإِنَّ فِيهِ النَّجَاتِ Allah has kept, kept salvation in honesty. إِنَّ الصِّدْقَ إِنَّ الصِّدْقَ يَهْدِي إِلَى الْبِرْ Truthfulness, honesty will take you towards piety, will take you towards Allah's obedience. وَإِنَّ الْبِرَّ يَهْدِي إِلَى الْجَنَّةِ And piety will take you to Jannah. Lies and deception will take you to fujur, will take you to sin, will take you to transgression, till eventually يُكْتَبْ عِنَّ اللَّهِ كَذَّابًا Till eventually you will be written in Allah's court as someone who is a liar. My Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam would go to the bazaars of Medina. He would go to the bazaars of Medina and he would tell the business people, he would tell the business people, Iyakum wal kadib, be careful about lying. Man ghashana falaysa minna. He didn't say if you don't make salah, you're out of my ummah. He didn't say if you don't fast, you're out of my ummah. He didn't say Allahu Akbar. He said, Man ghasha falaysa minna. He who is deceitful, he who is dishonest, laysa minna. He is not from the ummah of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. In the reign of Hajjaj bin Yusuf, Ibn Kharash, Rahimahullah, was known for his honesty, was known for his integrity. Ibn Kharash's two sons were part of that group, that army that opposed Hajjaj. When that army was defeated, those two sons obviously ran for their lives. They went into hiding. Eventually, they secretly returned back to the home of Ibn Kharash, their father. Hajjaj's CID spies informed him that the two sons of Ibn Kharash who are wanted, a price is on their lives, they are in their father's house, Hajjaj says for Ibn Kharash. And he asks him, at that, and that day he says to his courtiers, today I am going to test the honesty and the integrity of Ibn Kharash. When he is summoned in the court of Hajjaj, Hajjaj says to him, Ibn Kharash, tell me, where are your two sons? Where are your two sons? He smiles at Hajjaj and he says, Hajjaj, life and death is in the hands of Allah. As Muslims, we cannot lie. As Muslims, we cannot deceive. My two sons are in my own house. I just left them and came here now. When Hajjaj hears this, he smiles and he says, Ibn Kharash, I was testing you. If you had lied, I would have taken your head off and the head of your two sons. Because you spoke the truth, Allah has inspired it in my heart to preserve your life and the life of your two sons. فَإِنَّ فِيهِ najat, فَإِنَّ فِيهِ najat, فَإِنَّ فِيهِ najat. لَوْ رَأَيْتُمْ أَنَّ فِيهِ الْهَلَكَ My Nabi said, تَحَرَّهُ السِّدْ تَحَرَّهُ السِّدْ Be honest, even... If it looks to you that there is loss in this, Quran says, Lanatullahi al kadibin. If you are going to lie, if you are going to cheat, a Muslim does not cheat. The riwayat of Abdullah bin Mas'ud, radiallahu ta'ala anhu, what does he say? He says, Al qatlu fi sabilillah, tu kafiru dhunuba kullaha. He says, A man becomes shaheed, shaheed, a martyr in the part of Allah. This will expiate. Every sin that he committed, illa al-amana, except amanat dari, except amanat dari, except amanat dari, trustworthiness, wait to his zaban, not deceiving people, not doing people down. Abdullah bin Masood goes on, he says, amanat dari is such a thing, if you usurp someone's haq on the day of judgment, Allah will say to this person who became a shaheed, spilt his blood in the bath of Allah. Allah will say to this person, return back the amanat dari. Return back what you usurped from your Muslim brother. You return back what you usurped from that person. This person will say, Ya Allah, yawma tubaddalul ard, ghayr al ard, wa samawat, wa barazu lillahi al wahid al qahar. It won't be this earth. It won't be this earth. Everything will have been upended. He will say, Ya Allah, where is it that I must return it? Allah will say to him, it is in Hawiyah. 
लहा सब अबाब जहन्नम है सेवन लेवल्स हाविया जहीम सकर लदा खुतमा साहिर सेवन लेवल्स द लोवेस्ट लेवल ऑफ जहन्नम इन्ना इन अल मुनाफिकीन फिर दर किल असफली मिन नार अल्लाह से जिंद कुरान मुनाफिकीन विल बी इन द लोवेस्ट लेवल ऑफ जहन्नम हाउ डीप इज जहन्नम तिरमीजी शरीफ रिवायत वन डे रसूल सिटिंग विद सहाबा ऑल ऑफ अडन अंदरस एक्सप्लोजन सहाबा आलाम या रसूल वट इज हैपन माई नबी सलाम सेज सेवेंटी ईयर्स गो वन बोल्ड वॉज थ्रोन इन टू जहन्नम टूडे इट इज रीच द डेप्स ऑफ जहन्नम Such a Jahannam, Allah protect us. How we are the lowest level of Jahannam. The Shaheed will be told, according to the riwayat of Abdullah bin Masood. The Shaheed will be told that the hak which you made khianat with is in how we are going fetch it and return it. Can we imagine? Can we imagine what this person will have to go through to go through the seven levels of Jahannam? Finally, he will pick up this hak. that zameen or that land or whatever it is and carry it on his shoulders till he reaches right till the precipice then he will be flung back it will fall back into hawiya this will carry on for as long as allah decides my respected brothers my respected brothers do not take honesty and integrity lightly we are the ambassadors of islam you want to be beautiful you want sukoon in your home you want baraka in your life coming back to this hadith of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam we've already run out of time allah give opportunity in life inshallah we'll continue with the other two aspects my nabi said bring four things in your life bring four things in your life bring four things in your life fala alayka ma fataka min ad dunya if you don't have anything else you've lost nothing you've got everything your dunya is made your akhirat is made what are the four things two we have mentioned my nabi said sidq hadith sidq hadith sidq hadith when you speak speak the truth hifz amanat have amanat dari don't be gaddar don't deceive don't usurp the rights of others the other two just for translation he said husnu khaliqatin have a beautiful akhlaq and character wa iffatun fi tu'matin and let your earnings be halal let your food be halal let you what let what you consume be halal allah give us tawfiq wa khalaq